Hey, Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome back to Rome, the tutorial series dedicated to my boy, Everlake. And things are going relatively well. We have essentially conquered our entire continent, which was our goal. Um, we do have a little bit of unoccupied land that we're going to try to fill up. And now, right, as a prince player, as someone who's learning to play the game, my next objective, right, is to figure out, I, I have managed to achieve local dominance. How am I going to win the game? Um, and I do think that when you're on the lower difficulties, one of the easiest ways to win the game is actually with a culture victory because the AI tends to have really weak culture. Now, on that note, one thing we could do is actually liberate some of the sieves to make it easier but i think we'll just we'll just do it as is because you could you could win a culture victory very easily by just building wonders on relatively low difficulties and so i would like to demonstrate that um ju we're just going to focus on because we have two cultural city states we're just going to focus on building culture districts theater squares and wonders to to fulfill our objective of winning a cultural victory and i think that will be a really good demonstration of how you should be learning how to play on the Prince difficulty. Now, it's really important to note that this strategy won't apply very well as you go up the difficulty levels. It's really good for these lower difficulty levels. Now, we are in the Renaissance era, and we've got quite a bit that we want to do in the Renaissance era. Namely, we want to pick up things like banking, gunpowder, siege tactics, cartography. I think banking and cartography would be a great pair of pickups there. And so we will go for both. We have repaired the shrine in Kokakata. So we'll grab the temple as well to repair that. Because a little bit of faith can be good for a culture victory. Vasteras, we will immediately go for a granary. In fact, I might even buy the granary to allow the city to grow, then hard build the monument. We're going to go ahead and blast the skirmisher once and twice. Boom, plus two error score. Very nice. Then we're going to move this builder over here because we want to build the Colosseum. Um, I'll delay the Colosseum by a turn. I'll just put a turn into the Chancery. I'll just put one little turn in here. And now that we're building the Chancery, we do want to start thinking about making sure that we get to level three relationships with city-states to maximize the value that we get with the Chancery. Because if we get to the third level i.e. six envoy level, we will get three culture in the chancery. We'll get six gold in the chancery. We'll get three science in the chancery. So this is a, the chancery is a really important building for, for managing your relationship with the city states. Very, very important. Um, just an important game concept is the diplomatic order. We're going to go ahead and harvest the woods here. Now, if I wasn't putting a district here, sometimes it's worth it to harvest the deer and then build a lumber mill if you have a low production city. In this case, I'm just going to harvest twice because I wanted to get the harbor done. And we're going to try to get that lighthouse done ASAP. Because again, remember the lighthouse represents getting a trade route. Trade routes are incredibly valuable. They're incredibly powerful. They help your civilization out a lot when you're trying to scale up. We also have a ton of room for even more cities. If we really wanted to go all out on cities, it is a thing that we could do. Um, I don't think it's completely necessary for us. There's plus three error score for building our first harbor with a starting adjacency of four or higher. We have to deal with these barbarians over here. And I think we're having a little bit of a quandary. I think we want to kill this crossbowman. So I'll attack with this guy first to lower its health. And then I'll attack with this guy because now its combat strength is slightly lower and he'll take slightly less damage. Over here, we did just finish the armory in Aquileia. Let's start building some of the wonders like the Forbidden, the Forbidden City. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and plant a theater square right there and then begin the construction of the Forbidden City. I'm just going to start putting down wonders because they're a great source of tourism. Another great source of tourism that I could make are walls, especially because I'm playing um, Monarchy, which gives plus one housing per level of walls and plus two diplomatic favor for every Renaissance wall. So it could be really useful to me to go for siege tactics. You know, these are the sort of decisions that we could work our way towards. We have finished a harbor over here in Karakorum. Let's go ahead and get started on that lighthouse. We need to get some builders over here, but we can't afford to build them in this area. Uh, we got a harbor in Nidoros. We're guarding the harbor. So we've got a couple of trade routes as an option here. So we'll get those started. Um, we are sitting on five envoys. I think it would be nice to get suzerainty of Hunza. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five. Take that suzerainty of Hunza so that it belongs to me. Boom. And now we should get all of the gold benefits from this in the Chancery when the time comes. So now we're suzerain of every city seat that we found. So every single decision that we've made has been impactful for the outcome of the game. I'm going to go ahead and chop here again. That'll immediately finish the trade route building. 
the uh, uh, thingy, and I'm going to go ahead and place a campus, like so. Uh, I'm not going to immediately build the campus. I place the campus just to make it cheaper, right? Because uh, if you place a building, it becomes cheaper, or rather, if you place a district, it becomes cheaper than placing it later because the cost of a district goes up over the course of the game. Now, I'm going to do a pretty advanced maneuver here, which is called what I call pre-chopping. If I were to just chop here, and put this 90 production into this chancery, the chancery would be done slightly faster. But if I have the building queue enabled, which you can enable in the interface, I believe it's in options, interface, always open production queue. If you set this to enabled, you can clear the city's production queue, okay? And then normally, if I were to place Colosseum on this tile, it would destroy the tile, and I wouldn't get the 90 production from that stone. But if I clear the production queue, then I harvest the stone. Okay, I want you to look very carefully. 16 turns on Petra. I harvest the stone. That production goes into the buffer. And then I can use that buffer to finish the Colosseum faster. Boom. So I've effectively shaved three turns off my Colosseum, which is a very effective way to play the game. So just like small little maneuvers like that can sincere, sincerely change how you play the game. So do keep that kind of stuff in mind. Oh, we found Anshan, a very nice city state. Would have been nice to have those envoys, right? I could have built up my relationship to level two with them immediately. Uh, they want a barb camp killed in five tiles. That is something I can totally do. So I'll go start hunting down that barb camp to see if we can find it. A very interesting and cool Petra city over here that we could play around with. Let's make sure we kill you and we will retreat you to here. These guys need to work together. Uh, we're dealing with a lot of BS down here on the barb front. This is like a ton of barbs here. This is something you're going to run into when you're playing on lower difficulties because the AI just does not have a very good way of dealing with barbs on relatively low difficulties. We've managed to complete the commercial hub in the city of Sarpsborg. Let's get the market again because we really, really like trade routes. Trade routes are our favorite thing. Our favorite thing are trade routes. Okay, it's literally the best part of the game, in our opinion. I want you to just repeat that to yourself. Keep it in your mind. Why does the city have so much housing? Is this like a dominant, is this like a religion thing? Oh yeah, shrines and temples provide plus three food, plus two housing. That's incredible. I kind of wish you could take over someone's religion if you conquered their holy city, but apparently you can't. It's kind of annoying. But that feed the world is nice. We're going to go for a builder in here because we need it. These tiles need builders. And this builder is probably going to head north to help out some of these northern cities. We could make use of some lumber mills. So we will make lumber mills here. Although, you know, in a perfect world, I would be chopping and then placing mines. But, you know, we didn't quite get the terrain to be able to do that kind of thing. Let's bring you forward. Then we'll kill you. You're still scouting. There's the barb camp we would like to kill. I don't know if that's within five tiles, but it's it's certainly close. Um, let's go to here and go to here. I'm trying to keep these guys alive by retreating them into terrain. We have managed to finish a spy in Eretium. There are quite a few things that we can do with him, but I'm going to put him into um, Scythia's capital city so that we can get a little bit more vision of her. Spies are relatively low value on low difficulties, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't get them. It would be nice to get Machu Picchu here. And so I will go for Machu Picchu. We'll start building it. I'm also going to put an entertainment complex or a theater square adjacent to Machu Picchu so that we'll eventually get nice bonuses. But we'll go for Machu Picchu first. Uh, this is a wonder. It has to be built on a mountain. Mountain tiles provide a standard adjacency bonus to commercial hubs, theater squares, and industrial zone districts in all cities. It's a nice one. It'll only take 19 turns to build and it will give us a little bit of tourism towards the enemy. So I'd say if you're playing on Prince or King, transitioning into a culture victory is a really good way to get practice in a victory that... Uh, no, doesn't need you to conquer the world. So I'd say conquer your local area, then transition into a culture victory. It's a, it's a good default template. Because like if I look at the city, oh, damn, I need more production. And then I got to figure out, right, how do I get more production in here? Can I get more production in here? Is it viable to build a wonder in here? Maybe the city just can't get more production. Maybe I should build another builder. Maybe I should build another trader. Maybe the city needs a trader to the capital, right? Yeah, maybe that's what it needs. Maybe I could buy that trader. Boom. And then I'll build a trader. And then I'll build a, a builder. And maybe that's the way I'll do the city, right? And you should be like doing these chains of decisions, experimenting and building up your ability to feel what are the right kinds of decisions that you need to be making. Now, we could do a very interesting little Petra here, which would be three resources, or we could settle a Petra over here, which would be probably a little bit more interesting to me. So I, I kind of like that idea. We settle on this tile right there. So I think I'll save up the cash to buy a settler. It'll cost me about a thousand gold. It'll take me a few turns to get there, but that's okay. Now, we finished the workshop here in Ravenna. If we take a look at Ravenna, most of your tiles are improved. And we could go for the Mont Saint Michel. It's a 27 turn build that would provide us with uh, a little bit of tourism. So I'm going to go ahead and build the Mont Saint Michel. 27 turns, quite expensive. We will want to plug in a card that makes us build wonders faster, but we'll do that after nationalism. And I'll explain why we want nationalism in the first place and like why it's a good civic 
for uh, any sort of war-based games, or even just defending yourself. It's just good for your military in general. Let's go ahead and kill you. Step you forward, shoot there, shoot you, shoot you, kill. Alrighty. Um, go ahead and clear that. I hope you get a heal. You did not. I need you to retreat to like a safe place. Ooh, that's not a safe place. We need to find somewhere safe to hide this courser. He's a little bit, he's in a little bit of a dangerous area. Let's go ahead and shoot you and then clear. All right, nice. Um, we're going to go ahead and move you to here. You're going to move forward. You're going to shoot him and then you're going to clear the camp. Perfect. Plus three era score. We love to see that. We've already secured a golden age, so era score doesn't matter. We're just clearing these barbs just to make our life easier. You're going to trade with Rome. Five food, three production is great. Uh, I would like to build more production providing buildings in Rome, so I think I might go for a harbor next. That'll be a plus four harbor. I'm just going to go ahead and place that to lock in its price, and then we'll go back to working on the Colosseum. A little bit of UI manipulation there that I'm doing. If you'd like me to slow down and talk about those things, I can and will. We reached 15 population in a city, getting us plus one era score, which is very nice. I think that was, in fact, our capital. It was. Excellent. We've got the trader in Nidoros. So we've got a spare trader. I'm going to put this into Aquileia to try to build a forbidden city faster. I'm trying to see what I could do to maybe improve the production here. There is a tile here that could get better production. Now, you have a nice trader. You have some pretty cool wonders you could build. You actually have a mausoleum potential as well, which is very intriguing to me. So... I like that. That's cool. Instead, what I want you to do is build me a builder just for the general empire improvement. I, I need a certain amount of builders to keep my empire like going vertical, right? I need I need the graph. I need the line to go up. That's the thing that I, I need to I need to keep the line going up, uh, just like my cholesterol, right? Let's lock these two tiles in. Then I think we want to chop out this deer tile. I think that would be nice. All right. I need to find a place for you to heal. Okay. You might be able to heal here. I need you to find you a place to hide. You're healing. Cool. A lot of barbs over there, but we will get it cleared. Moderate flood in the capital that was mitigated by the Great Bath. Something we love to see. Extra faith in these tiles is always welcome. We can totally recruit Irene of Athens. She'll give us an extra governor title. So we'll plant her right there. Plus one governor title. And we can use that to promote Pingala with grants and a potentially curator eventually. We just want that 100% tourism from great works of writing and stuff like that. That would be very nice. It would be glorious and beautiful. I want you to trade with Rome because three production should shave a decent number of turns off the Forbidden City. It shaved four turns off that, right? Not bad. Not bad to shave four turns off. It's not the most incredible result, uh, but I'm also not going to turn my nose up at anything that speeds anything up. Right, nice. We cleared that. That did get us an envoy with Anshin. And now we should be able to, when we get more envoys, feed a ton of envoys into Anshin. We've already managed to gather up one tourist, so we do need to meet the next player. So cartography will be pretty useful. Um, where's my galley? There you are. So I would like to have more than one galley, but I also need to promote this guy so I can go find the other players, which we will do at cartography. It's always good to have it. If you have a coastal city, get at least one galley before you go to cartography so you can get a caravel to explore the world and find other players. I would say that that's pretty important. I don't think it's like a game breaking thing, but I just think it's pretty important because there's a lot of city states on the other island. There's a lot of players on the other island. There's a lot of potential on the other island. Uh, we did just finish nationalism, which is a really big deal. We finished cartography, which gave us access to the caravel, which can explore coastal tiles. And we can now embark on ocean tiles. So we also get plus two gold from fishing boat improvements. So our economy has just improved. Nationalism lets us do something incredibly important. It allows us to build an extra spy, but more importantly, it allows us to conjoin two units together into a single unit. Now that might not seem like a very big deal on the surface, but remember, if we can join two units together, okay, they get plus 10 combat strength and you get error score for it, right? So this, this trebuchet that I just merged together with another trebuchet, now it has plus one combat, plus 10 combat strength, which means it's harder to kill. It deals more damage. And then if you imagine like the density of the power of my empire has increased because now a single tile has more combat power and this unit effectively does 50% more damage. Yes, I combined two units together to do 50% more damage, but it also takes 50% less damage. So that's basically double as effective um, because it deals twice as much damage and takes half as much. So I really want you to think about why it's really important to be able to combine your units into cores. I think the recommended pathway is to, as you're unlocking nationalism, you want to start building units again to go to the front line and join up with your units. And you want low ranking units to join with your high ranking units so that you can benefit from the um, promotions uh, on highly strong units. But yes, I would go as far as to say is once you have nationalism, you should basically stop using non-core units unless you have a reason to. Like for example, I'm not going to war in this game and I just need to fight barbarians and barbarians never core their units. So fighting them is fine.
We don't need to unlock exploration. I think I'm going to come up over here to grab civil engineering. Now that we have nationalism, that's another governor title as well. We could plug in curator on Pingala, which will give us extra tourism from great works, which will help us win the game slightly faster. We'll recruit a great general. Aethel Fred, uh, we don't plan to do any more military stuff, so I'm just going to go ahead and use him up. And this is like the phase of the game where I'm just like, I need to get rid of things. With the idea being that like, I don't need these great generals anymore because they're kind of falling out of fashion, so I should just get rid of them. Okay, excellent. We got a builder in here. I think I would like to get the shipyard more than I would like to get another district or something. But I think I'm also going to chop here so that I can place another district. And I think that district will be a theater square right there. But I'm going to get that shipyard and then go for the theater square. Again, the theater square will eventually lead to more tourism. So that's why I'm making that decision. In this city, honestly, there's not really much that I can do here in this particular city. It's a really low productivity city that has basically no growth, very low potential. I could go for the Petra, but I would rather settle a Petra in that weird tile and just get that whole desert in my in my grasp. So I think instead of doing anything interesting in the city, we'll just go ahead and plonk down a district of some kind, maybe an entertainment complex to like buff up the local area which I think is a totally fine thing to do. Just allow this city to eventually contribute to the happiness of other cities. Plus, I think the entertainment complex eventually gives you a little bit of extra tourism. Yeah, not much we can do of Astaras. It will eventually be useful. So looking at Stockholm, we are still in the process of repairing the city. I think repairing buildings is always worth it over building new ones in a city. Uh, I, th I can only think of maybe a handful of super late game scenarios where that's not true. Uh, I'll chop here to get this guy out. This city has a ton and I mean a ton of mineable tiles available. So I think I'll build a few farms around here to feed it so that it can potentially work more of those tiles. So in terms of districts, I think it would be really nice for us to get a theater square. And I think if I put a theater square right here, I could build an entertainment complex between these two theater squares and theater squares get plus two adjacency from entertainment complexes, which would give me an extra boost of culture. My culture is very strong right now. I'm very happy about my position in the game. Uh, we did just finish the water mill over in Karlstad. We could really use a builder to repair the city, so I'll just quickly grab one. Um, we are trading. This city does not need a trader. I'm going to move a trader into Coqueta. If I don't already have one, it would be really nice. Uh, we'll put a farm here, and we'll put a farm here. And now we have really nice high adjacency farms to help the city to grow and work these really high production tiles. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and harvest the deer to make the theater square go faster. And we are earning a lot of great rider points, six per turn. We definitely need to get those numbers up, but we're, we're kind of on the pathway of great people. Now, I would go as far as to say as Lugdunum is basically finished from the perspective of Magnus's input. So we should find another city with a lot of chops that are available that could really make use of it. And Nidoros could be that city. So I think we're gonna put Magnus back into Nidoros and make use of that because there's not a whole lot of good chopping cities nearby. We're very close to being able to build lumber mills on rainforests, which is a great late game production boost. If you're in a situation where you don't have a lot of hills, which we are in that situation, we don't have a lot of hills. So we are going to have to make use of the, um, we're going to have to make use of, of that. Right. Timor, he grants promotions. I'll just give a promotion to this guy um, and take it. That's fine. Sun Tzu, on the other hand, I'm going to move him to the capital so that he can produce a great work of writing. That's his special ability. And otherwise, things are going perfectly fine. Scotland's a little bit upset with me. We have met Scotland. I'm going to allow people to be mad at me. It's totally fine. It's not important that people like me right now. It will be important long term. Also, I decided to upgrade this guy to a caravel because I want to go explore and see if I can find more city states. I believe we were building an amphitheater in Urumqi. Sorry, what was that? Yeah, in, in a room can we built an amphitheater. Let's start doing some theater square festivals so that we can get great writers and great artists a little bit quicker. I think that's a totally fun and exciting thing to do. We definitely want to get our amphitheaters up because we want those passive great writer points. But I think running the projects themselves will mean a big, um, a big boost in the rate at which we get these great writers because we're still in the medieval era great writers. OK, we're going to trade to Rome from Conquetta for that three production per turn. That'll really help the city out. In fact, it's 30% of the city's production. A little bit of an amenity problem in my empire. That'll be something that'll take me a while to work out. Um, just because my empire is so big, um, it can be hard to manage those amenities. It's going to be a process for us. We will get there in the end. Don't worry about it. We'll sort it out. It's going to happen. Again, it's just going to be a process. I totally forgot to change my government. Um, so I will do it at mercantilism. I think that's quite important, actually. We're going to teleport Trung Track over to an encampment because if I use him on an encampment, we'll get a 25% reduction in war weariness for the rest of the game. I'm just trying to explain all of my moves as I go. Each individual move 
um, over explained. So there's mercantilism. Logistics is really useful for moving builders around your empire to improve tiles. Triangular trade is quite good for getting extra yields from your trade routes, especially because we have eight trade routes. Um, drill manuals is good for getting more resources. Torah de Belim can be quite a good wonder. It's not amazing. The privateer is quite a good m naval military unit. It can be used for it can be useful in a variety of scenarios. And the lumber mills on Rainforest is very useful. So we definitely want to keep retainers for as long as possible. Conscription is quite good. I think we no longer need raid. Um, as just an aside, we could probably make do with limes or limes here to build our walls. Uh, Diplomatic League can go and we can replace Diplomatic League with Charismatic Leader to get more influence. Republican Legacy is fine. We would like to plug in Liberalism to get extra things. So maybe we have enough gold to where we can get rid of Conscription now. Plug in Limes and then plug in Liberalism with the idea being that we can get extra amenities because amenities are how you scale up your empire. So I like that idea. Amenities are really, really useful because if a city has negative amenities, it suffers a 10% loss in all of its yields. That's science, gold, production, everything. 10% just gone. So conversely, if you have a lot of positive amenities, you get a 10% boost. So it's actually quite a big swing. Um, we are just building lumber mills in cities like Setia just to give it that little bit of production that it needs because it's a pretty low production city without these things. Trunk track, I'm going to move to this encampment and I will then retire him to reduce my war weariness by 25%. Every time one of your military units engages in a battle, depending on the position of the battle and the type of battle and you know how it goes, like if it's inside your territory or in enemy territory, um, you will generate a certain amount of war weariness for your empire and the level of war weariness that you generate will dictate how many negative amenities your cities have while you're at war. So it's something you definitely want to minimize. I also want to be building Renaissance up to Renaissance walls in all of my cities. And the reason that I want to be building Renaissance walls is because not only do we have the Limes card plugged in for 100% production towards defensive buildings, and not only is the World Congress giving 100% production towards city center buildings, when we reach the conservation civic, all of our walls will give us tourism based on the level of the wall. So an ancient wall will give us one tourism, a medieval wall will give us three, one from the ancient wall, two from the medieval wall, and a renaissance wall will give us six tourism, one from the ancient wall, two from the medieval wall, and three from the renaissance. So this is actually quite a lot of tourism if you have a really big empire, which we do. So I think in a lot of my cities, I'm going to be going through and starting to build the ancient walls now um, and prioritizing that. I'm going to basically go through every single city cancel whatever it is they're doing and prioritize getting walls built because there's actually quite a narrow window here where we can do this extremely efficiently. And I would like to hit that narrow window uh, right now. So we're going to go ahead and cancel basically everything else that we're doing because we're building walls three times faster than we will ever do, uh, than we would ever do normally. And if you're building something three times faster, it means you're getting it for one third of the price or something, something to that effect. Something like that. The exception is the Colosseum here. I really want to finish the Colosseum. I will cancel the Forbidden City just for now. And I don't mind if some of these wonders are taken by the AI. That's actually fine. But I think, yeah, we're just going to start doing wall building. Now is the time to do it uh, because that's six tourism per city, which over the course of a game, like individually each city, it's like having an extra pair of great works of writing. Um, but considering how efficient they are in terms of production, they're, I, I, the way I will explain it is they are roughly equivalent to building a wonder in terms of the production efficiency of them, like an early game wonder. So that's why I think they're worth doing. It's not the most production efficient thing that you can do at your time, but it is relatively production efficient. Now, what do Moais do? Let me have a look. Moai. These are pretty unique um, tile improvement because they give you 100% of the tourism from culture and it gets plus one culture for every two adjacent Moais, plus one base culture. Uh, and if we have medieval fairs, it's plus one from each adjacent Moai. So let's see. It's culture if it's adjacent to a coast or lake tile. So we want to build these along a coastline, which is kind of an interesting idea to me. So let's get started. Moai right there. That tile later on in the game will be worth tourism. Once we reach the flight technology, because the flight technology enables the ability to generate tourism from culture tiles. So that's going to be something that's going to be important when it comes to reaching our super late game potential. And in order to reach our super late game potential, we should start setting up for that now. Because the sooner we start building that engine, the sooner we start working towards that, the better off we're going to be. Ancient walls are completed here. There's going to be a lot of repetitive actions here where I'm just going through. Everywhere that ancient walls finish, I'm just going to start building medieval walls. Everywhere medieval walls finish, I'm just going to start building uh, renaissance walls. So on, so forth. That will repeat. Now, the Beatty is also a pretty interesting tile improvement. If I go and search for the Beatty, see if I can. Yep, there we go. The Beatty. 
This also gives you tourism based on its culture output. So it gets extra tourism or extra culture for being adjacent to bonus resources. There's a bonus resource here. So sure, why not put a Beatty there? That's plus two tourism later on in the game. This is, these are the kind of decisions we have to start thinking about. And we might even sweep builders back through to completely change our terrain to suit a tourism victory, right? To prepare for the inevitable future that we're moving towards. Which is why the more efficient the builders that you can create, you can have your land geared towards production in the early game, build all the things that you need, and then use all the builder like savings because you were super efficient with your builders it'll be really cheap relatively speaking to then use all that production you built up to switch your empire to a more tourism direction so like all of these decisions that we've been making throughout this series should chain together in a very very natural way as you continue to play i'm going to go ahead and chop here that'll finish the renaissance walls a little bit quicker medieval walls in here and yeah that's great it's all generally coming together in exactly the way that I would like it to. We are going to want like a, a set of builders soon. But again, we're in absolutely no hurry. We haven't even revealed the other continent. I do need to clear out this barb camp because it's causing me a little bit of problems over here. That will eventually happen. We have finished some things. We're going to go for colonialism here because it gives fishing boats plus one production as well as access to two extra envoys, which is quite nice. And we also want to reach natural history as well as conservation because conservation is an important tourism technology. Okay. Renaissance walls have been completed in Nidoros. We're going to go ahead and start working on something that gives us a little bit of tourism. Uh, that'll probably be the Mausoleum of Halakarnassus, one of my favorite wonders of all time. And we're going to go ahead and chop out or lumber mill some of these tiles. So I think we have one, two, if I focus on these, we probably could do it like a mine and a lumber mill or something. So I'll probably chop a little bit. Maybe I'll chop this tile. I think that makes sense. Maybe this tile and this tile, this one a lumber mill. Something like that feels about appropriate. Renaissance walls, back on the cards, medieval walls on the cards, medieval walls medieval walls and we are going to go ahead and grab our good friend Amani no we don't need to do Amani we will go ahead and promote who well I guess at this point it's kind of dealer's choice we have the main thing that Pingala is level so we could just go for more like we could grab Moksha and just plant him in a city generate a little bit of faith um, let's go ahead and make sure we plug in public works because we, we do still need a ton of builders and that's a slightly improved builder card uh, we definitely want to get to level Two, relationship with Anshan, because that's going to represent a small bump in our science. It's going to be plus two science per turn, which is nice, and it gets us slightly closer to potential suzerainty. We'll build the plantation over here, because again, every tile that we can get down is a slight improvement to the empire. We'll grab ourselves a second great work of writing. And these great works are important because they're going to slowly start increasing the amount of tourism that we're producing. That small trickle of tourism will turn into a flood. We've already generated enough tourism to get ourselves a tourist, and we only need 35 to win the game. So it shouldn't take us along at all, considering the low culture output of these other civilizations, for them to start losing tourism victory to us. And that's why I recommend switching over to the tourism victory after you kill your continent, after you, you obtain a, a dominance, is because it's typically the easiest win to take on lower difficulties. In fact, I guarantee you some people who play on like Prince difficulty have won culture victories by accident, just by building wonders and stuff, um, just by playing the game. Um, and that's because on lower difficulties, the AI just does not generate enough culture to really stop it. And so that's why we're going that pathway. And I want you to get some really easy wins under your belt so you could build confidence. That's what this series is all about. I want you to understand, like, what are the thoughts going through my head as I play? And how do you build confidence? I'm going to give an envoy to Auckland, but I'll do it later. And honestly, this is this is how any good teacher works. Is, is, is you, you help the people that you want to help. You want them to build up their confidence. You want to build up their knowledge. You want them to feel, you want to give them challenges that they feel like they can take on. We're going to chop here and then move up to Renaissance walls. And then we're going to chop here. That'll get us the mausoleum slightly faster. It's totally worth it to chop, okay? It's, it's a, chopping out forests is a very safe decision. And here's the really key thing. By chopping them, you will learn over time when is it a bad idea to chop? Now, we just completed the Colosseum. The Colosseum provides two culture, two loyalty, and two amenities to every city center within six tiles. So I want you to understand that how you count those six tiles, you start at the Colosseum, press G on your keyboard to turn on the grid tile so you can see the lines. You start in the Colosseum. Every time you cross a line, count up. And you go in a straight line to the city. So it's like one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the maximum range on the left. And similarly, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it doesn't hit Sarpsborg, but it does hit Setia. One, two, three, four, five, six. 
It does hit Ravenna, so it hits five cities. That means this thing is worth 10 culture per turn, 10 wonders per turn, and if you press the seven key on your keyboard to bring up the tourism map mode, if I hover over it, you can see it's producing five tourism per turn. And that will slowly grow over the course of the game. You can see here my Great Bath has generated over 500 tourism over the course of the game. Uh, you've generated over 300. And just like slowly but surely, these wonders will generate tourism that'll bring in enemy tourists to your empire, thus leading you to victory. I'm not going to bother explaining how the tourism victory works, like in depth and mechanically. All that you have to know is that by building things that give you tourism, you should win on a relatively low difficulty game. I would be very, very surprised if you didn't. I'm just going to pop a baity here. Again, these will eventually lead to tourism. We don't need these tiles for anything else. You don't have to work a tile for it to give you tourism. It just has to exist. That is the beauty of a tourism victory. And it's why in a tourism victory, it's often a really good idea to get a lot of land. Uh, because the more land you have, the more tourism tiles you can produce. The more tourism tiles you can produce, the better off you are. Let's go ahead and combine these courses together into a single horseman so we can fight a little bit more effectively. Because we're major defeating against these guys. Um, and I'm going to start bringing my own coursers to um, to the north because I'm getting a little bit annoyed with the barbs that are floating around there. The medieval era ends. Let's go ahead and grab the medieval walls, continuing on that pathway. We got the Renaissance walls in Aquileia. We're going to go back down and finish the Forbidden City. We got the medieval walls in Karakorum. Let's get the started on the Renaissance walls. Um, we've got a builder over here. I think there's some great tiles that we can improve. Chop here. Ten turns on the Halicarnassus. Very excited by that. Let's attack him. Plus two flanking bonus, and we will be able to kill him next turn, potentially with this guy. I think we should be able to. You want to explore along the coastline with your caravel, because your goal is to get as close to that coastline as possible and try to spot city-states. That's what we're really looking for, um, because that's the thing that we're going to benefit the most from exploration. Finding city-states that we can start to build relationships with. We did manage to increase our diplomatic visibility. This is just a great mission to repeat over and over. Uh, because it gives you more information about the civilization. So just, you know, diplomatic information, totally fine. Let's go ahead and take the Renaissance walls in here. We'll take Renaissance walls in here as well. We're moving the cavalry to the north because our goal is to try to reinforce the poor uh, units over here that have been kind of caught out in the lurch. There is a barbarian settler outside my city of Karlstad. That's very interesting because I was literally just about to buy a settler for this Petra city that I want to build because I thought it would be fun to try to make a Petra city. We have just finished colonialism. We're going to get to work on natural history because we want access to the zoo, which is basically a weaker version of the Colosseum, but you can build it in any city that you want. And so it's a great way to keep your cities happy. It'll also give us access to things like the Ferris wheel, as well as archaeologists, the water park, and two extra envoys. And it leads to conservation, which is a really important technology because it gives access to the naturalist, which is a great way to generate tourism. Speaking of naturalists, we are going to want to think about, are we going to be building any national parks? Where are we going to be building our national parks? How do you build national parks? And that's why this culture transition is such a fantastic move, because it allows you to set yourself up to learn all of those things. Um, we're going to go ahead and do another Mont Saint Michel. I think I'm going to be using my gold for making settlers because there's a ton of na national park potential in some of this land. Yeah, like these mountains here, there's some national parkage that we could be doing. Like right here is a good national park. So how do national parks work? So it has to be a vertical diamond. I'm going to go ahead and place the tacks. One tack like this. One tack like this. One tack like this. One tack like this. So this is the configuration of it. If you go to the appeal map mode, every single tile has to be at least two appeal. Mountains are always four appeal. And they all have to be within range and owned by a single city. So you can see one, two, three. A city can only reach three tiles. There are rare cases where they can reach four or five, but that usually like depends on the city having a lot of like extra range. If you press the nine key, you can see uh, the Empire map mode, these tiles are very clearly inside of Stockholm, which means we could put a national park there. National parks increase the amenities of your empire and also give you a bunch of tourism, so they're super worth it to build. Renaissance walls are complete in Kolkata. Let's go ahead and finish uh, theater squares. Okay, we're sitting on four envoys. I think what I would like to do is I'm going to come into my government, I'm going to remove Charismatic Leader, and I'm going to go ahead and plug in the Diplomatic League card to get the first envoy you send to each city-state to count as two envoys. I'm going to confirm that. I'll put an envoy into Auckland. That'll double it. And then I'll put another envoy in. And that will get me suzerainty of them, plus two error score. And also a little bit of scouting information, so I know a bit more about this. Now, I could totally choose to just kill this other continent. But I'm really, really lazy when it comes to crossing oceans. It's just not my vibe. Renaissance walls in the capital. 
Then we finish Renaissance Walls in Mediolanum. I think we would like the theater square in the city. I think it would be giga poggers. I think it would also be super, super poggers for us to get a builder in here too. Um, in terms of technology, I'm going to finish off the Renaissance era. These techs aren't super important. I mean, the Patala Palace is a pretty cool wonder because you get an extra diplomatic policy slot. A lot of fun to play around with. They're not super important for us winning the game, so I'm just not going to talk about them too much. Let's go ahead and grab the Machu Picchu because it's a fun wonder. Uh, in terms of Arumki, we will definitely go for the Renaissance Walls. Renaissance Walls are completed in here. Is there a cool wonder that we could get in a few turns? Oh, hey, there's the Great Lighthouse. It would crush a crab tile, though, and I don't want to crush a crab. Instead, I'll go for the Kilwa Kisawani because I have tiles here that are not very high value that I can totally just put it down there, and it'll only take 27, 24 turns. Again, remember, when you're on this low of a difficulty, you can just kind of build wonders with enough cities and you'll win the game. That's how it works most of the time. We are going to grab the Amphitheater in Kolkata to be able to get more culture. Over here, we're going to grab the Renaissance Walls. That's very nice. Renaissance Walls again. We're going to settle the Petra City. We'll get plus three error score for settling near Natural Wonder. And we will immediately begin the construction of Petra. We're also going to feed in a whole bunch of money to speed up this city. In particular, we're looking for extra food. I'll buy a builder in here so that I can help the city out a little bit because I got a really nice tile here that I'd like to work and a sheep tile as well. Okay, we're into Lahore. We're going to put an envoy into Lahore. Excellent. And then we'll put another envoy into Lahore. And we get suzerainty. We also get vision. Um, very, very cool. This is a militaristic city-state. It's all about building units and helping us make knee hangs. Very cool. Let's keep on exploring. Um, I think there might be one or two, maybe three more city-states on the map that we could find. Renaissance walls have been completed in the capital city. I think it would make a lot of sense for us to get the chancery now. I think it would make a lot of sense for us to maybe go for the intelligence agency or something like that. We'd also like to get like art museums out. Just a ton of stuff that we need to get around to. You're, you're, you're often going to find yourself in Civ having to make a sacrifice between like you're just not going to have enough production to build everything you want. So you kind of have to just be like, I'll build this later, I guess. And so that's just a decision you're going to have to make many, many, many times. I'm going to build a bath here to get a little bit of amenities in the city. It's worth plus one amenity. We got the medieval walls in Stockholm. Renaissance walls are a go. Uh, this settler, I don't even know where I'll send it. You know, I'll probably send it up this way. So we'll, we'll get it to walk over there. It'll take a long time for it to walk that way. But when it does get there, it'll be nice. Mausoleum at Halakarnassus is completed. Plus one science, plus one faith, plus one culture for all coastal tiles in the city. Great engineers have an additional charge. Very cool. More importantly, if we press seven on our keyboard, we can see that this wonder is now generating tourism for us, thus increasing our probability of winning the game at a sooner date. Um, I'm not going to talk about that great engine, great uh, blah, 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 blah the great uh, general that I just recruited because it doesn't have a big impact on the game. It doesn't matter. It's not important. It is not central to the outcome of the game for us. And so therefore, it is not worth spending a whole bunch of time talking about it. It is really quite that simple. Cleared another barb camp. We have like an insane amount of error score right now. Renaissance walls are finished in Sarpsborg. We care a lot about tourism. So we're going to be building a theater square like so. Uh, we don't have amazing tiles for it. So get the theater, theater squares down. We got the mausoleum here. I do think it makes sense now to go for a theater square. Boosh, right there. Perfect. To take advantage of the adjacency to the world wonder. World wonders do give adjacency to theater squares. So we will always want to be trying to benefit from that if we can. Um, I think it would make sense also for me to stop off for a builder in this city. Maybe I'll get two because there's a few tiles in the nearby area that could use builders. And a lot of my cities are kind of busy building um, non that kind of stuff, non-buildery stuff. My relationship with these civilizations should be starting to heal a little bit. There shouldn't be that many grievances in the world to where they they still hate me a lot. Um, there's still a little bit of grievances, so some people will still be upset. Um, but we'll, we should definitely be getting towards a more sustainable future when it comes to relationships. We have just entered into the actual Renaissance era, so we're a little bit ahead of time, and that's going to start becoming completely natural for you as to play the game. We actually have a ton of faith in the bank, so we could totally go monumentality and completely transform our society now and go for mass settlers and take this over. And I think that's totally what we're going to do because monumentality gives you plus two movement for all your builders. So you improve your tiles faster. You can purchase civilian units with faith. So you could buy archaeologists with faith. Your builders and settlers are 30% cheaper to purchase with faith and gold. So it means your faith in gold when you use it for expanding your empire and improving your empire goes a lot further. And basically what I'm going to do is start buying a builder from Aquileia every single turn because this will be a seven charge builder, which is incredibly efficient. We've got the lighthouse in Setia. I think it makes totally like good sense for us to get a theater square. So I'm just going to plonk it right there. It, it doesn't even need to have good adjacency because it's being built for the ability to store great works and nothing else. 
Let's go ahead and pop down a lumber mill right there. Keep these tiles improving. El Cid, I would like you to form a core out of a land unit. I do have a horseman here that that would be very useful on, but we'll wait um, just a little bit before we can start making that happen. The natural history has been completed. Uh, we have the Ferris wheel, the aquarium, the water park. None of those things I think are particularly interesting to us. I mean, the archaeologist could be quite a powerful pickup here because it would we can buy them with faith. So it's something we could look into making some archaeological museums to get great works. Archaeological great works are really good. Let's grab urbanization and feed that into conservation so that we can get the tourism from walls. That should be a big boost to our tourism because we just finished all of our wall stuff. Um, we do have our tier three diplomatic quarter building. So now our goal should be to build up the relationships of city states to tier three so that we can benefit from it because we're building the chancery as we speak. Uh, we already have a maxed out consulate generating four science, four, uh, four science, four culture and four gold, which is a lot of all those resources, right? It's a really efficient single building um, considering it's also giving us a ton of envoys. So I would say like economically, we're in an extremely dominant position. We're making twice as much science as Scythia and five times as much culture or whatever. Let's go ahead and take depredation and kill this guy. Perfect. We'll kill you too. And we have managed to finish the bath in Mediolanum. We are going to go ahead and slowly build the Anchor Watt. We don't really care about the benefits of the Anchor Watt itself. It gives you plus one population in all cities, which is nice, don't get me wrong, and plus one housing in all cities. We really just care about the tourism that it produces, and 34 turns for return on investment isn't bad. I totally forgot to plug in the Wonder production card, um, but that'll just have to come a little bit later. Medieval walls will be completed. Let's go for the Renaissance walls. The city has relatively poor production, so it does take a little bit of time for it to do anything. We definitely need builders down here. I just don't know when or where we're going to get them. We're sitting on three envoys. I think it would make sense to get suzerainty of Auckland in my capital city. That'll give me an extra three production when I'm building things in the capital. Or not get suzerainty of Auckland, go to go to a level three relationship with them. Which is kind of a fun idea to think about. That like imagine if your relationship could like level up. <laughs> hey babe, we just we just hit level two in relationship status. It's kind of weird that that's how people think about things actually. Let's build some new districts. Uh, you only have to vote for yourself twice when it comes to border control treaty to benefit from this. It's not a particularly interesting or useful bonus, but it's very easy to get, so why wouldn't you get it? The AI is almost always going to vote down the most luxuries that you have, so Citrus is almost certainly going to be voted down because everyone on the map kind of hates me. So if you can't beat them, join them. I'm also going to vote down Citrus. Boom. Very, very simple decision tree when it comes to certain diplomatic things. And you can see here, basically the entire AI team pumped all of their votes into getting rid of Citrus with the exception of Citia, who does not hate me. Similarly, they only ever vote once for themselves, option A. So if you vote for yourself twice, you will win the border control treaty. We're going to go ahead and grab a great admiral. If you only have one vote, you can also just vote for another player or for yourself. And I still think you win because you technically are player zero. And so I think the lower ranked player wins ties in Civ. So coming up to Urumki, um, we are going to go ahead and grab ourselves an archaeological museum. Although maybe it would be good for me to build a builder up here. There are a lot of tiles that are unimproved. I need to remember to be buying builders in the city of Aquileia constantly with my faith. Let's go ahead and take plus one site range on all naval units. Again, a lot of these things, a lot of the decisions that I don't think are going to be hugely impactful for the outcome of the game, I'm going to start glossing over them if I don't think they're important. I hope you understand the reasoning behind that. We killed a unit in front of El Cid, getting us another two error score. And we're totally clearing out some extra choppable tiles in the city of Nidoros. Let's see if we can approach um, this continent from the other direction. So we'll just put that guy on auto explore. I think maybe that's the way to do it is to put the Caraval on auto explore. Um, let him find his own way around the world. Caravals are a little bit safer to put on auto explore because they tend to actually find useful tiles and not get themselves killed. They still can get themselves killed, but they're a little bit more resilient than um, other things. Now, uh, we have a little bit of a conundrum here in that we would like to be able to start getting our Great Works this turn. You could just go into your Great Works screen and move the Great Works out of the city that the Great Rider appeared in, and then you'll be able to create them in the city that he appeared in. It's a very simple, easy process. Very hard to mess up. Um, let's get some archaeological museums. I don't know how many I'll get. I'll probably get like three or four um, just to try to get that extra tourism. Uh, you can do a search for antiquity sites. If you do a search for the antiquity sites, if I zoom out, you can see that we can see at least 25 on the map in general. So there's qu quite a lot of justification for going for archaeologists. Quite a lot. Let's go ahead and place a Beatty right there. And now the really nice thing about putting Beatties on these, these tiles is because they get base culture from being next to a natural, a natural wonder, you actually get bonus tourism from that uh, when, it, when you get flight because technically the culture is inherited by the tile. So while it would normally give me one tourism from this tile, you actually get three. 
because the, the base tile itself has a little bit of extra tourism or rather a little bit of extra culture. So we managed to get the shipyard in Lugdunum. I would say if you're a relatively new player, it's good to build a caravel and just park it on your shipyard to keep your shipyard safe from any pillaging. Um, totally fine. You can also do this with galleys and then upgrade them. I think it's a it's a fairly good play. I don't often do it because I feel very experienced with the game and I can kind of get away with not doing it, so to speak. Um, but if you're not as confident as me, totally just build them. And that's what I'm going to do because I'm, I'm trying to play like I think someone who is not very experienced with the game should play when they're playing on Prince difficulty. Like this is this is the level that you need to play at in order to beat the game, in order to get the W, in order to secure the big old dub in the sky. Okay, we definitely want to work the sheep and then we would like to start working the production. So I'll put the city on production focus and hopefully in a few turns, we'll be able to get that Petra. Would love a trade route here, actually. So I think I'll buy one, super worth it. There is a forest fire happening on someone else's continent, thankfully, I don't have to worry about that. Uh, let's retreat you to a safe, di safe distance. I'll bring you forward to hopefully deal with this man-at-arms. Excellent. And we are making our way towards the industrial era technologies. Now, I want to talk about the most important industrial era technology in the entire game, industrialization. The reason industrialization is so important is because you, it gives you access to coal, which is another way to turn non-strategic resource mine tiles into mining tiles. And... It gives you plus one production to mine improvements, which is huge. The combination of these two things is insane. It also gives you access to factories, which allow you to give six production to every city and range of an industrial zone, especially if you combine it with a power plant, which allows you to double the production boost from the industrial zone. Very, very powerful. Very, very powerful technology. Industrialization is very, very important. The timing of when you hit industrialization is very game defining. It changes how you should play the game. We did just get Marco Polo. Marco Polo grants a free trader unit in the city, increases our trade route capacity by one, and foreign trade routes to the city provide two gold to both cities. Useful, just gets me an extra trader. We'll go ahead and boop, we'll drop him in. I am mostly doing internal trade routes, so Marco Polo isn't the most useful guy in the entire world, but he will be useful. I'm gonna go ahead and put this trade route into Vastaras. This trader is going to go to Rome, that's gonna be plus three production in the city that's making Petra, which will shave about 20 turns off that. Um, I'm hoping to increase that boost. Let's go ahead and harvest here to finish that theater square. We'll immediately go for the amphitheater. We should be getting great riders at a fairly decent clip now. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, we're getting nine great rider per points per turn, which isn't like super Giga Chad Omega amazing, but it's pretty decent. And I'm mostly just focusing on increasing the quality of the tiles in my empire that are being worked. I'm putting down mines, putting down lumber mills, chopping hills, putting down mines on the hills, all that sort of stuff. So looking at this city, it's a little bit disorganized, a little bit chaotic, but we can, we can work with disorganized and chaotic, man. We can make it work. It's not impossible. All right, let's put a little mine right here. Nidoros now has like a ton of high production tiles. It's a, 40, a 39 production city. So it's just cranking out, cranking out production. You definitely want food and production are your two most important resources when developing your empire. Keep that in mind. When you're developing your empire, you want food and production. They really, really help you develop an incredibly powerful empire. Young, young shipping could really use a trader, so I'll get a trader there. Nor shipping could also really use a trader, so I'll get a trader there. Um, just want to use traders to build up some of these weaker cities, um, which is a great use of gold. I could be using faith for this technically. We have finished the Machu Picchu, which is going to allow us to get adjacency from our mountains. More importantly, if we go into the tourism map mode, this wonder generates tourism. Isn't that wonderful? Let's go up here. Um, can we build another wonder? Nope, we're going to get started on the theater square because we want more tourism. Our goal is just increase this tourism number as much as possible. Building theater squares does lead to more tourism. And so uh, that is the decision pathway that we are making. Okay, so where are we going to start putting like a huge carpet of Moais? I actually think the city of Stockholm is a great candidate for a Moai carpet. So I'm just going to start moving builders down there um, in anticipation of us researching the flight technology in the next episode. That's going to be probably the capstone that we'll go for. But a relatively short Renaissance era in terms of like number of turns, but a relatively impactful Renaissance era in terms of how it changed the game. In the next episode, you're going to see my tourism explode and you're almost certainly going to see a victory. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I hope this has been a useful tutorial. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.